Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this uh, webinar. Uh, we're going to wait a couple more minutes before we get started to make sure we get folks uh, a chance to join. Uh, feel free to say hi in the chat or share something about your morning, but we'll be, we'll be starting just in a little bit. Yeah, happy Friday, everyone. Good morning. It's a beautiful day. I hope folks will get a chance to enjoy that later on. So again, welcome, and uh, we'll get started in a few minutes. Feel free to, to uh, post a little note in the chat to say hi. Maybe we'll wait another minute. That's good. If someone puts something in the chat, that means you can hear me. So that's good news. Hi, Morgan. All right, I think we can probably slowly get started and as more people join, they will uh, um, they will catch up at that point. So welcome and uh, thank you for taking the time to attend this presentation this morning. My name is Julia Trieha. I'm a program manager with Efficiency Vermont. I've been with VIC for about 14 years at this point. I've been working both on the Efficiency Vermont contract and in our consulting division where I've worked on a pretty wide diversity of of consulting contracts nationwide. And uh, I'm also a certified passive house consultant with PS. I've been in my current role here at Efficiency Vermont for about two years. My current focus is on building controls and flexible load management, both on the commercial and residential side. So it's very nice to meet all of you virtually and uh, hopefully we'll get to work together more. So this presentation serves as an overview of the new limited time incentive program that Efficiency Vermont is launching to support integrated controls for ductless seat pumps. So this training will be recorded and available for viewing on the program's webpage. Attending this short uh, presentation is required to access our incentive program. And if you're watching a recording of the, of the presentation, you can verify your attendance by taking a short quiz, quiz after the presentation. But if you're attending this presentation live, we have an attendance list, so you don't need to take the quiz. We know, we know you're here. So there will be some time at the end for questions and answers. So please hold your questions until the end or write them in the chat. If you need any clarification on anything I'm saying, feel free to put that in the chat. So with that, let's get started. Um, so first, a little background. For Efficiency Vermont and the Vermont Utilities, the goal of supported, supporting integrated controls uh, for ductless mini splits is really to enable the heat pumps to cover a greater, a greater portion of the heating load, to be able to serve the whole home with the heat pump whenever possible, and to offset as much fossil fuel as possible. So in many cases in Vermont, heat pumps are not all and not being used for, for heating as much as they're really capable of. Sometimes they use mostly for cooling, sometimes the set points are not set right in the thermostat and the remote, and the heat pump is not covering as much of the heating load as, as it could. So integrate controls that tie the heat pump and the central heating systems are one way to increase the number of hours that the customers actually use their heat pump for heating. So our goal really here is to increase how much heat pumps are used for heating. And the, this program is run in partnership with Vermont's electric utilities. 
and all the Vermont utilities are, are part, partnering on this program. So first, some definitions. What do we mean by integrated controls here? So integrated controls um, can control both the ductless mini split and the central heating system from a single device. So they can uh, send a call for heat to both the ductless mini split and the central heating system. They can switch, uh, switch between the two heating systems based on outdoor temperature and the temperature in the remote room away from the indoor heat pump um, if that's needed to align with best practice recommendations. One other thing I want to note here is um, our rebate program is currently a limited time offer for one year or 100 rebates, whatever, whichever comes first. It's hard to know what kind of uptake we'll see at this point. But what we're hoping to do is gain enough experience, enough customer feedback, collect enough information, enough data to roll this into a larger scale offer with a more streamlined approach to the, to the rebate. So again, this is a first step to, um, to get everyone comfortable with this technology, and then we can hopefully expand to full scale after this limited time offer. So again, it's uh, 100 rebates or one year. So you might think, I get what's in it for the utilities, but what's in it for the customer? What's in it for the homeowner? So you might have seen Efficiency Vermont's blog post, who knew eight ways not to use a heat pump. And tip number two in that list is don't leave your heating, your existing heating system cranked up. So many Vermonters are not using their heat pump to its full potential for heating and more fossil fuel displacement and energy savings can really be achieved if we can help the customer manage their heat pump and central heating system and simplify their interaction with their heating system. So rather than having to adjust the heat pump with the remote and the central system with the thermostat, they would put a, a set point on a single device and then they can just forget about it and be comfortable with that, um, having to think about their heating systems again. So again, customer benefits are peace of mind. They can set the set point on one thermostat and then not think about it. Um, they can feel like they're doing what's best for the environment by using their heat pump as much as possible, reducing fossil fuel consumption. They'll also enjoy the benefits of an internet connected thermostat, such as remote access, vacation mode, and so on. They can feel that they're leaders with cutting edge smart technology in their homes. But one thing that those devices likely won't do for them is save them a lot of money on their heating bills. From the analysis that I've done in most, casing, in most cases, they would see pretty small savings relative to not having integrated controls. And depending on the fuel, they could even uh, see their heating cost increase a, li a little bit more. We're talking about, I don't know, 50, $100 a year. But in some cases, especially with natural gas, they could see a higher bill. So I wouldn't sell those products as being big cost savers, but they're but they will provide some peace of mind and environmental benefits that will, that will re resonate with some customers. So I'm going to split this presentation in two. I'll spend the first 15 minutes or so on the rebate, rebate program details, and then the, the second 15 minutes on best practice consideration, and then I'll leave some time for questions. So as I go through the slides, um, please keep in mind that this is an emerging technology. And to really gain momentum with the motors, it's going to be really important to have good installations. So to follow best practice and limit the risk for customer discomfort and dissatisfaction. We wanna be sure that this technology is successful so that it can be widely adopted and we can see more fossil fuel displacement, more heat pumps serving the whole home. And, and for that wide adoption, having um, really good customer satisfaction will be important. So with that, let's jump into the overview of, the, of this new incentive program. Uh, so there are, many, uh, there are many options for integrating a ductless mini split and a central heating system. Our rebate program does not cover all the products that are out there, but only those that meet a specific criteria. So for this offer, for this limited time offer, we're targeting products that can simplify the customer's life and allow for easy programming of the controls based on an outdoor temperature. For, for installations where remote room sensors are indicated 
to align with best practice guidelines will support what is called the droop approach as well. So I'll touch on that more later. But the um, one thing we're requiring of the devices is to be connected to the internet. And that's to allow for, for current or future demand response programs with the utilities. So the, the full criteria on the webpage here, which is the same link that you would have gotten in an email, but um, I wanted to flag that I'm aware that there are more simpler switch that can be installed in some cases to, uh, to switch between the two systems, but really we're focusing on integrate internet enabled controls here so that they can provide smart grid benefits down the road. But if you're already installing those non-connected approach, don't let this program stop you. There's no reason to if that's something you're comfortable with and your customers like. I'm also aware that there are other solutions that work through the If This Then That app um, on the internet. If you've played around with it, it's, it's pretty cool. But that's not an approach that we're supporting through this limited time incentive program at this point. That might be something that we highlight as an option in a blog post, uh, uh, something along those lines, but um, currently the incentive program does not support th uh, that approach. So with, the, with those criteria, the three products that currently um, qualify for this incentive program are the Daikin OnePlus, the FlarePuck Pro, and the Mitsubishi Kumo Station. And there might be more as, a, as we become aware of other products out there. Um, and so the, the qualified product list is open to additions. There, there's more info on that, on that link here. The FlarePuck Pro is a device that uses the infrared of the indoor head to communicate with the indoor head. So um, that one is compatible with most heat pump um, manufacturers and most heat pump um, models as well. I also wanted to note that there's one product that will enable customers to sign up for GMT's load control program currently. That's called the e-controls. And customers who sign up for that GMP load controls program will, can receive an additional incentive, which is uh, $60 a year, I believe, at this time. So if you install a flare for a GMP customer, you might want that, to let them know that there's an additional incentive from their electric utility. Uh, so again, installation quality will really be key to make sure customers are comfortable and that the word of mouth is positive and that you don't experience callbacks. No one, no one wants callbacks. So for that reason, we wanted to limit the incentive to contractors in the EEN network who have followed best practice trainings and product specific trainings. So this verification will be handled by limiting the availability, availability of the rebate only to folks that are enrolled in the integrated controls group of the EEN. So to enroll in that group, you need to be an EEN heat pump member, which uh, that a lot of you already are. Um, so you would, the step to get there, you would follow this presentation, which you are currently, <laughs> And then if you're watching the recording, you would take a short quiz at the end to verify participation. And then you, you would need to follow a product specific training, um, such as the manufacturer trainings that are listed on the webpage currently. And then you would send us verification that you followed that product specific training. Either that's as a, a quiz on our web webpage, if it's a recorded webinar, or you would send us a verification that you attended an in-person training. And then you would uh, fill out that EEN form and check the integrated controls uh, checkbox here. And I'll remind you of the steps at the end as well. So to access the incentive program, what you would do once you're enrolled in that EEN integrated control subgroup, you would install a new heat pump and integrate controls. Um, then you would use the Excel calculator that we uh, that we're providing on, on the web page, and I'll talk about that a little more later. But you would use that Excel calculator to decide on what is a good outdoor temperature balance point for the home. And then uh, you program that balance point in the controls. And then you want to take a make sure you take a screenshot or a photo because that's something you'll need to send with your rebate form to document that the integration was programmed. 
And then the last step is to complete the rebate form, uh, have the customer sign it, and then either you or the customer can send it to, to Efficiency Vermont for uh, redemption. So we'll, um, yeah, make sure you send your screenshot that verifies the integration is programmed along with that rebate form. So now I'm gonna go through a few program details uh, to keep in mind. I'll go through the laundry list here. So the incentive is for up to $600 per home. It's not $600 per thermostat, but it's $600 per customer here. We ask that the customer pays at least $100 $50 out of pocket so that they have a vested interest in the controls. It's not a free gizmo that they, they're not actually interested in. Um, so what that means is if, if the cost of the, in, the product and installation is under $600, then the customer would pay, um, then the incentive would be less than $600. Otherwise, if the cost of the installed product is over $600, then the, I mean, over $750, then the, um, Incentive will be $600. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Uh, feel free to ask questions at the end if that, if that was confusing. So um, this incentive is only for new ductless mini splits. It's not available for already installed heat pumps at this point. It's uh, also not available for ducted heat pumps because that's already a requirement of um, that ducted heat pump incentive program. The central heating system must be either oil, propane, or natural gas. The incentive is not available for resistance, electric, or central wood systems. You'll want to use the switchover temperature tool to help you determine a good balance point. And I'll give the, a demo of the tool in a minute. And you're also eligible for a $200 trade ally incentive for each rebate form that you submit or that your customers submit. So while either you or the customer can send us the rebate form um, to receive that $600 incentive, if you want to be sure that we get the form and that you receive a $200 trade ally incentive, you may want to submit the rebate form yourself. A few more points here is that the customer must sign the rebate form and they must provide their electric account number on the form. So uh, it might be helpful to let them know ahead of time so they have time to dig it up. Um, the rebate cannot be combined with the Efficiency Vermont Smart Thermostat rebate. Uh, this is for year round residents only, not for second homes, because really the goal is to maximize the, the use of that heat pump. So make sure you provide a screenshot that demonstrate the integration was programmed. And the, a link of the, to the rebate form will soon be available on this web page here, um, as well as um, other, um, other information. Okay, so now that the fun program details are out of the way, let's focus on best practice a little bit. Integrate controls will not work well in every situation and installation in situations where they will not work well would tarnish the image of this new technology and really market, limit market adoption in the future. So it's really important to install the integrate controls only in situations where they work well, where, they, where they're likely to work well. So here I'm going to provide a pretty high level overview of, of best practice recommendations, but through the product specific training, you'll, you'll hear more that are that product specific as well. So let's start with an example here. So we have one house with a hydronic distribution system, two, no, two zones for the boiler, zone A upstairs, one indoor head upstairs here. Um, that rectangle is the indoor head. Um, then we have zone B downstairs with a second indoor head downstairs. In this example, the building envelope is tight and there's good zonal alignment between the boiler zones and the heat pumps. And the heat pumps are sized and located in, to cover the zones, that, the whole zone that they are in. So we have a great layout for integrated controls here. Good alignment between the heat pumps and the zones. Um, so in this, in this example here, the balance point was programmed at 15 degrees Fahrenheit. So above 15 degrees here, 
the heat pump covers the load. So when, when I've put the box in red, that means that's what's on to cover the load. So about 15 degrees, both the heat pumps are on to cover that load. And then above, um, then it, when it dips below 15 degrees, the central heating system, that boiler here in the basement, will turn on and supplement the heat pumps to cover the, the heating load. So that's what we mean by the balance point is the temperature when the, when the boiler would come on to supplement the heat pumps. That's really the gist of it. Um, so the red boxes here in, on this lead exemplify what's, what's on. Um, optionally, if, if there's a good reason to do so, you can also program a cutoff temperature in, in all those integrated controls. So if there's a reason to do so, you could set a temperature at which the, the heat pumps would turn off entirely. So that's what in this presentation I, I called the cutoff temperature. So in this example, it's at zero degrees. So below zero, zero degrees, the heat pumps would turn off and the boiler was, would stay on to cover the whole load. And again, that's, that's not something um, you necessarily have to do in every installation, but it's an option if, if it's warranted. An alternative approach would be, um, let's say we're above 15 degrees, but you've installed some remote room sensors, which have um, put us a little white circle here. Um, so let's say you, your um, indoor heads are not centrally located in that zone, and there's a room away from the indoor heads that could get cold um, because the because there's a delay in the heat getting to it. So if you install a remote room sensor, when it gets cold enough in that room, that would trigger the boiler to come on um, to supplement the heat pumps, even if you stay, if you're still above the balance point. And to if you only want to use the droop method, that's an option as well. You can do that by either setting the balance point really low or with some systems, you can just do that directly in the, in the controls. Um, all right, so that was just an example. I'm not saying you need to program the temperature, the balance point at 15 degrees, but um, I just wanted to make, to be clear about what we mean by the balance point. And in this presentation, I used the terms balance point and cutoff. But some of, in some of the product specific trainings that you'll follow, you may hear the, the terms cutoff or the term switchover or cutover used. Um, so the, it's just different ter terminology, but in, in most cases, we're really talking about the same thing. So keep in mind that, um, yeah, there's the balance point and then there's the cutoff temperature and they don't have to be the same. And again, when you hear of the droop approach, that's when you have an additional temperature sensor installed in the remote room that turns the boiler on if the heat pump can't keep up and meet the set point in that room. So for this incentive program, we're not mandating a set temperature for the balance point. It's really your call based on the house characteristics and the customer goals. But you'll wanna keep in mind that the program goals here are really to maximize the use of the heat pump and um, maximize the fossil fuel offset. So again, you'll want to program the control so that the heat pump stays on below the balance point, unless, um, unless there's a, a good reason to have a cutoff temperature instead. And some of the things you'll make, want to make sure to consider when you're choosing a balance point are first the customer goals. As you decide on a good balance point for a specific situation, keep in mind what the customer goals are. Is it to stay comfortable? Is it to save as much fossil fuel as possible? Is it to minimize the heating bill? I mean, most likely they'll want, they'll want all three, but it's not always going to be possible to do all three at the same time. So I think understanding what your customers' goals are so that, um, so that they're happy with the systems will be really important. The house layout and the the ease of heat transfer between rooms and how quickly the house loses heat. Um, for example, if it's pretty drafty or poorly insulated, that's also gonna be important. And if you're using remote room sensor, you'll also need to decide on a good location for those sensors and um, appropriate set points for those sensors. 
you'll also want to think about the boiler warm-up time and the hydronic distribution system warm-up time. For example, if you have a radiant floor in a, in a slab, it's going to take a longer time to warm up. So you'll want to make sure to keep that in mind. So I have linked an Excel calculator here uh, to help you determine what is a good outdoor temperature to turn on the central system as supplemental heat. And that link will be on the, on the, is on the web page with all the program information as well. So I'm going to switch to that tool so I can give you um, a quick overview of the of that tool and hopefully it will be helpful um, to help determine a good balance point. <clears throat> so um, in this tool you'll want to enter the values in the cells highlighted in yellow here and the results will come out in those blue cells. So the the tool is based on the square footage of the house, or if you're looking at just one zone at a time, the square footage of that zone, you'll um, want to enter the backup heating fuel type, in this case propane, the mini split brand and model number, and that uses a lookup function to populate the COP for that heat pump, and the number of indoor heads. If you have more than one um, model for that, um, for the indoor heads installed in a, in a house, then you'll have to manually enter the, um, the BTU capacity at five degrees and 42, 47 degrees. But if it's, the, if it's um, like two indoor heads of the same model, you can just do that here and it will populate automatically. And then you'll want to um, include the fuel cost per gallon or per CCF. Um, of the fuel that the customer is using for the central heating system. And then that will give you two graphs. The top one shows what is a good, what a good range might be for balance point. Let me go back to a different fuel type here. Uh, a different number of indoor head, I mean. Uh, so, um, let's see. So the, the purple line here is the um, BTU output that the heat pump will give you at different temperatures. And then the, um, the blue line here is the uh, heating loads of a leaky house at different temperature. And the orange line is the um, heating load of a tight house at different temperature. And the um, intersection of the two is, is what would be an appropriate uh, range for your balance point. Noting that you still need to consider all the other uh, factors that we talked that I just talked about when we're thinking about your balance point. But this will give you a range to start with in terms of what might be a good balance point to meet the load. So that's those two values here at the intersection of those lines. In a leakier house, you would, in this example, you'd want to go around 32 degrees to meet the load. If you have a tight house, that would be more around 16 degrees Fahrenheit. And you should still be able to uh, meet the heating needs of the house, theoretically, um, at those temperatures with just the heat pump. And then the second graph here shows you what the balance points uh, would be if the customer's goal is to use whichever fuel is cheaper to operate. So again, the purple line is the heat pump, the cost of to operate the heat pump in dollar per MMBTUs at different outdoor temperature. And the uh, green light is the fossil fuel. So where the two intersect is the temperature at which um, they would start saving energy by switching to the central heating system. So in this example, against propane, it would have to be minus eight degrees Fahrenheit outside for the homeowner to start paying more with the heat pump than with a propane system. So as you change, if, if let's say we change this fuel type to oil, that will change the, the uh, balance point here. And similarly, if we change the number of indoor heads or the size of the home, that will um, change this as well. So if you 
if you happen to have done a manual J on the house and have the exact heat load, you can also enter it directly in the second tab um, if you want a more accurate um, a more accurate um, balance point if you do have the, the actual heating load. Uh, so yeah, I see a question, is this data pulled from NEEP? And yes, it is. So when you enter the model number that pulls the COP and the BTU at the different temperatures from the NEEP list. So hopefully that's a tool that'll be helpful um, to help you determine that a good balance point. You'll notice that sometimes it's quite a range. And again, that's where the that's where the customer goal will be important, if, whether it's saving money or whether it's uh, staying comfortable. And if it's somewhere in between or a combination, you'll um, yeah, you'll need to think about a lot of factors and a lot of factors relating to the house characteristic to, to decide what is the, the best balance point. So uh, I'll leave it at that. Make sure you take a look and play around with it a little bit. And then if you have any questions or any comments about the tool, feel free to reach out and, uh, and let me know. So I'm gonna go back to the slide here. Um, so if you're not using an outdoor temperature to switch over only a droop method with the remote room sensors, please make sure you enter this info in the rebate form so that we can really understand what approach you're taking when you're programming these controls and so that we can adjust um, a future program to better fit the reality of what's installed in the, in the field. And I see there's a question, 17 cents. Does 17 cents represent the service fee in the electric bill as well, or just a kilowatt hour cost? Um, that's just a kilowatt hour cost. And that's used to calculate the, um, the heat pump cost. So um, not every situation will be appropriate for integrated controls. We strongly recommend that, um, that you focus on the more simple setups at this point, as they're more likely to be successful and that will limit the risk for callbacks and dissatisfactions. So um, an example of what makes a good situation for integrated controls are, for example, the top left here. We have a single head in a really tight building envelope, an open floor plan house. The heat is distributed, distributed pretty easily throughout the, the whole home. That would be a great place to, to put integrated controls. Another example on the top right, um, there are two zones in the house, one upstairs, one downstairs, with the indoor heads matching uh, the two zones. These are, again, tight building envelope. It's been weatherized. There's not much. Um, um, air leakage, it, you have good zonal alignment between the heat pumps and the zones of the boiler. Those, those also would make good, a good candidate. One thing you'll want to avoid, and I forgot to put the red line across this one, but um, you want to avoid an indoor, um, you'll want to really avoid situations where the indoor head is tucked into a corner of an addition and the house is a big leaky old farmhouse and only has one heating zone associated with a furnace, something where the heat pump just won't be able to cover the, the, the whole house. And because that's much less likely to work well with integrated controls, that's something you should really try to avoid or, or use um, mitigation strategies here. Otherwise you'll have cold corners in the rooms away from the heat pump. If you don't have those remote room sensors, then you could get mold build up in those cold corners. So it's really not something you want to, to, uh, to do. But you could, you could add remote room sensors in those remote room, rooms and then have the central system kick in when it's, still, when it's still relatively warm out, I guess, when it's above the balance point. And then you could cover the load in the whole house, but you would, um, having the, the heating system kick in at that point would mean that you would also be heating the house even where the indoor head is located. So in the case of a heat pump not aligned with the zones of the house, or there being just one zone, then we won't see the, the fossil fuel offset that we're shooting for if we have those remote room sensors. 
Um, so there are cases where you might not see the, the customer benefits um, in terms of, um, uh, of reduction of fossil fuels. So, so again, the point here is that you wanna have really good zonal alignment between the heat pumps and the central heating zones when you're installing those integrate, integrated controls. And you want the heat pumps to cover the whole zone and not just be tucked in the corner of a, of a big leaky house. So of course, integrated controls will only perform as well as the location of the multiple components here. So of everything that you need to take into account when locating an indoor head, the most important for integrated controls will be um, locating the indoor heads where they can cover a whole heating zone. And for that, you'll have to, of course, consider the airflow from the heat pump and uh, the layout of the house and making sure that um, the throw from the from the airstream from the heat pump can can cover this the all the rooms in that zone you'll also want to install all the temperature sensing devices the thermostat the sensors where they're not in the direct warm airflow from any of the emitters including that uh, the indoor head you want them out of the sun and then interior walls and also any infrared devices such as the flare packs that use the infrared to talk to the indoor head those will be, need to be in the line of sight of the indoor heads. And so if you're working with a house that really should have multiple zones and doesn't, what I would suggest is seeing if the homeowner is open to breaking up the heating zones for added comfort, rather than adding integrated controls in a situation that might not work well. Um, homeowners might not be always open to it, but it's, it's worth, it's worth asking, I think, because uh, again, we want that good zonal alignment. Um, so that's about for the that's about it for the high level best practice. There will be product specific trainings that will have more details um, that relate to specific devices. So what I wanted to do is a just a quick recap of the next steps. If you'd like to participate in this program, and if um, and if you want to be able to offer that. Um, control that incentive to your customers to install integrated controls. So again, this incentive program is currently limited to installers that enroll in the EEN integrated controls group. And to enroll in that group, you'll also need to be enrolled in the Duckless Municipal EEN group. So if you're watching the recording of this presentation, the next step is going to be for you to go on the web page and I'll provide the link again. Um, it's on this page, but also on the next page, but if you go on this link, you'll soon see some quizzes here that demonstrate that, um, that you can take to demonstrate that you've followed this training. It's, it's a pretty short quiz. Um, and then um, once you've taken that quiz, your answers will be automatically forwarded to the EEN administrators. So we'll be able to verify your attendance to this training. If you're, again, if you're attending this presentation live, we know you attended from the attendance list, so you don't need to take the quiz. And then once you've demonstrated you attended this presentation, you'll want to make sure to follow the product specific trainings for the integrated control that you're planning to install. So these are linked on the webpage, and then you can either take the quiz that's linked, linked on our webpage or send proof of attendance to that product specific in-person training. And then once you've taken the training, you can either contact your efficiency remote account manager or email the EEN directly to be added to that integrated controls uh, service listing. So here's the link to that webpage again and my contact info. So don't, don't, hesitate, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or concerns about the program. Because again, this is a limited time offer to gather data, get, gather customer feedback, it's an emerging technology, but we're able to, we're hoping to be able to expand this program in the future. So having good participation and, and happy customers will be key here. Um, so again, a link to the slide deck and a, link, a copy of this recording will soon be available and be linked on this webpage. So with that, I would like to open it up to questions and I see there are a couple in the chat. Let me go back to it. Um, I see 
to answer the, uh, Greg's question here. So the question, are dual fuel thermostat approved for use with centrally ducted systems? Many of these are Wi-Fi enabled and already used in utility DSM programs. Yep, uh, I see Jake answered, but so the question was whether the dual fuel thermostats were approved for this program. So um, this program is really specific to ductless heat pumps. Uh, through a ducted program, we are already requiring um, those dual fuel thermostats. So this is, um, this is not a place where the dual fuel thermostat specific to ducted heat pumps would be, um, would be allowed in the program because it's really a ductless heat pump focus program. And Noel, if that doesn't answer your question, feel free to, to chime in further. So if you, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put it in the chat or you can also raise your hands or unmute yourself. Jake. Yeah, I, I, just to elaborate a little bit on the answer to that question. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the, the reason why we're really focusing on ductless in this situation is because ducted is a, you know, a, a dual fuel thermostat for ducted, um, although not explicitly required by the program is really sort of more or less required by the installation, especially if you're using the furnace air handler as your air handler. Um, you really need to integrate those controls. So we, we were, this would be what we call free ridership, right? If we were starting to provide rebates for things that people were already kind of had to do. So the thinking here, um, although yes, there is some opportunity for load control uh, with those that I think is, there's some opportunity that we should probably, and we will and have been talking to the utilities about. Um, the, 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 uh, frontier here really is with ductless because we just don't have a good solution um, out there in the, in the marketplace. I mean, there are some good solutions that are just not getting installed and that's what we're really focused on, so. Thanks, Jake, for, for adding to that. Any other questions? I'll wait another minute to see if anything comes up. Juliet, there was another question that just popped into the chat. It's a good one. Can you clarify if a ducted head on a multi-split is allowed? So are you, are you talking about a short duct here or a... So and... Yeah, I think what, they're, what, what uh, Tom is referring to is um, what we call mini duct or compact duct, yeah. units, which we often see on as either a single zone uh, or as a multi-zone, so. Yep, yeah, those, those would be eligible. You'd, if, you, uh, if you're using the flare pack, which uses the infrared, you'd wanna make sure that, um, that this uh, setup enables the, the infrared commands to be sent to it, but it, it is um, a short duck or Mini duct is eligible in the program. Yep. Any other questions or thoughts? Any feedback? I'd be curious uh, if I know we have a handful of contractors that are attending. Um, if folks are seeing some, you know, some real opportunity here with customers and sort of like what the opportunity is, uh, you know, it, the scale of this, do we think that we, is the expectation that customers are really going to embrace this? Is this going to be a hard sell? I'm, I'm just kind of curious how folks are, now that you understand how the program works and you know what it's focused on, what your thoughts are, any feedback would be great. Uh, there's a question here. Will the ACA 16WSPD 
Kc qualify, which equivalent to the Kumo cloud. So the, the Kumo station would be qualified. The Kumo cloud would need to go through IFTTT if you were using that without the Kumo station, and that's not something we're currently supporting. So I'm not familiar with the, the model number that you're listing here, but um, if it's equivalent to the Kumo cloud, it wouldn't. If it's equivalent to the Kumo station, it might. So uh, if you have any info that you want to send my way, um, you're welcome to do that. And then I can take a, a closer look. look. Any other questions? And after the after the webinar, there will be a short survey that pops up that asks about your interest in pursuing this technology and any um, any concerns or um, any anything you look forward to about this program. So if you if you have a minute to just fill out those three questions, that would be super helpful for us to understand where where you stand. But feel free to add it here too. Uh, another question, are all currently listed NEEP models eligible or just pre-approved? Um, so I think the, so the NEEP models would be something to do with the uh, qualification of the heat pump in our ductless heat pump program. So the, uh, the integrated controls is something we'd want to have installed along with a, a model that's listed on the NEEP list. So a model that's also part of our um, ductless heat pump program. So, um, so in a way it would be limited to the, the NEEP models that are also qualified for the ductless mini split incentive. Anything else? So if I don't see any more questions, um, I think we can probably end here. Thank you so much for taking the time this morning to attend this. And again, there'll be a, a quick survey after this meeting ends to, to gauge your interest in installing integrated controls. So uh, please complete that survey if you have a chance, uh, if you have time. And uh, yeah, don't hesitate to reach out to me directly if you have any questions or concerns or anything comes up. Thank you so much. Have a good weekend.